Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. This video is going to be one of a number of videos available to you during your time at Podium training to become a driving instructor. And so you've probably done a lot of homework, a lot of research and self-study in preparation for delivering one of your first lessons. It's a bit of a myth that your first live lesson with a pupil is going to be a moving off, stopping lesson with cockpit controls. It really just depends on what uh, learner you get given always available to you. However, you may also be in a situation where your trainer would like to see you deliver a lesson on moving off. So today I'm going to go through some things that may assist you in preparation to delivering that session, whether that's with your trainer or a live pupil. What I want you to do whilst you're watching this video is pause at regular intervals and just make some notes on anything that you found interesting, new, or something that you know that you need to work on and develop further on. This video is not going to contain absolutely everything. So you've done some sessions with your trainer and we're about to deliver a moving off lesson. We need to be thinking about our competencies that's going to be on our part three exam and ensure that we cover them all. Have you planned for the lesson? Do you know much about your learner? If we don't, how are we going to find that out? So we must make sure that we include that when we're delivering any type of lesson. And remember, a moving off, a stopping, a cockpit drill, that's a subject. And within that subject, we have many different skills that need to be developed, fine-tuned or practised. Your learner may not get it the first time. You may not need to give them a full guided walkthrough and brief. However, you might. This is going to depend on the conversation that you have with your learner and their current skills and abilities. We must make sure that we listen actively. If we listen actively, we may be able to get things moving quicker for them and learning can take place sooner. If your learner tells you, well, I've done this lesson before, but it was a while ago, and then we go and give them a full guided walkthrough, they're probably going to get a little bit bored. Whereas we could take that knowledge and use it we might be able to dig a little bit deeper, get a bit more understanding out of them, and then give them the bits that they don't need. So in preparation for this lesson that you're about to deliver, what skills within the subject of moving off does your learner need to know, and what is it you need to cover? So do they understand the controls of the vehicle? Do they know where all of the controls are? Do they know what controls they're gonna use? And what I mean by that is, if you're driving a manual car, do they understand the clutch and how that works? If not, then we might need to adapt this lesson so they can have further practice on using that clutch. This is going to be the first time that they're going to be using the clutch, potentially moving off into live traffic. So we need to ensure that they fully understand this. They also need to understand how the car is going to sound. So if you have a manual petrol car or perhaps a diesel, they're going to sound different. It's going to feel different. Are they driving an automatic with a conventional clutch? Or are they driving a hybrid? Those two are also going to feel quite different. So it's important that we know what they understand. And what you're going to start to realise here is this is the first time that we're actually going to think of the learner. Can we put ourselves in the learner's shoes? Can we anticipate what they're thinking or feeling? And can we build on that by asking the right questions? To give you an example of this is they've probably sat in a car with parents, guardians, friends and family, and they've seen them use a clutch. And you might get the answer of, well, it allows me to select a gear. Or you may get, it lets me stop. That's one piece of information that we can get more out of to help us understand what they're thinking and feeling and predict what they may do out on the road. With moving off, we want to start thinking about what faults could occur. And what I mean by faults are the problems that your learner may come across. So could you take a moment to think about all of the skills that you're going to require of your learner to be able to move off on the side of the road and what could go wrong along the way? And do you have skills, knowledge and exercises to help put those pieces right when it does go wrong? Are you there and ready to support them? So thinking about the skills that they're going to need they're going to need to know and understand the controls, how they work, how they use them. They're going to have to understand, potentially, 
the POM routine the prepare the observe the move or perhaps you're using POSSUM so prepare observe signal move and there's other acronyms we don't have to make sure that these learners know these acronyms only if it's going to benefit them if we start giving acronyms to a learner that doesn't learn this way then we're going to make it worse and harder for them they're going to struggle you might have heard the analogy hammering a square peg into a round hole and that's effectively what you'll do if you don't use the right teaching strategies to your learner's learning style. In the back of our mind, we're going to want to ensure they use possum or pop. If we see them doing it, then that's, that's enough. If they're missing a part out, that's our job as the instructor to notice the bit part that's missing and help them to understand what was missing what the problem is with missing it and how to correct it. That's our job as an instructor. That also applies with the MSPSL. You may find that your trainer has mentioned the word MSPSL, Mirror Signal Position Speed Look. Again, we don't have to ingrain that into the pupil if that's not their learning style. It's as long as they're doing it and they understand why they're doing it. And that enables us to not have robotic learners just copying what you say and do they're actually thinking for themselves and making a decision based on what they see. So back to the skills they need. Do they understand possum, pom, or that process? Do they understand in which order they need to prepare the car? Do they understand what effective observations are and where they might look based on the situation that you're in? Where are you parked? What's around you? What dangers could arise? Are there any potential dangers? Are we perceiving hazards or are we anticipating hazards? What's the age of your learner and what experiences have they already had? What job do they do? What do they do in their spare time? You might find that every single learner is thinking about a different type of danger and we need to know this so that we can fill in the gaps. The signal moving, is that a conscious decision whether to signal? Are they just moving their head or are they actually looking? Are there any telltale signs that can help you with that? Maybe we could ask them a question. Is there anything around? Did you see that pram? Can you see the ball? These are questions, probing questions, that help us understand whether that learner is actually looking or whether it's just a head movement. And the movement comes, so this is the physical part of the drive. Are they able to control that car moving off? What have they done previously? Have you given them an exercise to do so, to show you where their skill is at with moving? the clutch, the gas, the brake? Are they just going to pull out into the road? Are they going to get scared? Is something going to make them jump? Ensure that we've covered those skills, enable them to practice before we're moving off into live traffic. And to give you an example, that may be just moving a couple of feet forwards. It may be that you've done that a few times and we want to practice moving off at an angle or on a hill. These are all skills you're developing that they're going to use throughout their driving. And it's all moving off. We also want to think about, once we moved off, we also need to stop. So have you made an agreement with them about who's going to take control of that? Are they just solely working and focusing on moving the vehicle off? Making sure they're doing the whole routine themselves. Have you broken it down further? And are you taking care of the stopping of the vehicle? You may even want to consider adapting your lesson to break those chunks down so that they're focused on just one aspect and that could be using the clutch. Maybe you're doing the observations for them. And whilst you're doing that and looking at your competency list for the part three, you're taking care of and managing risk for them, with them and for other road users. Something else to consider whilst you're delivering this lesson and you're asking the questions and gaining understanding and probing a little bit deeper is remember you have training aids available to you. So do you have any videos? Are you using Google Maps to help explain and show your training area and your route. Maybe you could show them on Google Maps the whole road that you're perhaps using. Maybe you could discuss with them and get agreement where you may be stopping at. Maybe you could use your visual aid. So our training aid, we use something called uh, a colour file, but you may have one similar. Okay. And I do, I really do strongly believe that a picture paints a thousand words. We have four different types of learners. However, a visual tends to overlap a lot of the other learning styles. We also have available um, toy cars, so we can actually show a lifelike representation of what we're going to be doing. And all of these things can help support your learner. But remember, it's important that we gain their agreement and we ask the right questions at the right time. 
What we try not to do is copy a lesson. So I'm sure you, you've seen there's plenty of videos available online of a very first lesson, cockpit and controls, moving off and stopping lesson. And it's very standard subject based and it's the instructor just giving all of the information. Remember, we're skill based teaching and we're supporting the learner. And we're using whatever knowledge or skills they don't have and then we're going to give it to them. So if you find that your learner struggling doesn't know the answer to something, then let's empower them, support them, and help them find a way that works for them. There's not just one way to learn to drive. And your personality will come out of this is the most important thing. If you can make the lesson fun and engaging, then your learner will learn. Nobody was born to drive. Humans have been around longer than a vehicle. And the very first people that invented the cars and started to drive didn't have a driving instructor. So your learner will learn regardless of you. So they will learn regardless of us or not. It's our job to ensure it's fun and safe, they're getting great value for money, and obviously that they're going to learn quicker than if they were on their own.